So today we are getting back on the reliable Cebu Pacific and flying to Manila. These flights cost us around $70. Per person that is, but after about 10 YouTube videos and two weeks in the Philippines, we're heading back to Manila because we didn't get to spend much time here. So as you'll see, we have a lot to do and a lot in this video. So I made it back to Manila, checked into our hotel room. This is the perk about being back in a big city is that we get to grab food at midnight mm -hmm. while we wait for our friend to come. It's pretty good. I like it. Not bad. That angle is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> doing foreigner things so I had to give myself this basic waffle sandwich. I got myself a wine ham and cheddar cheese. The reason being is because we're running behind schedule right now. We're trying to make it to Makati and Makati is a expensive place. So think of it like the Beverly Hills of Los Angeles. You do not want to eat there. We're still budget travelers. We keep saying that every video so we're just going to go toward that city, toward that area but we're gonna make sure we eat here first so we're not spending loads of money there. We're gonna save that for a good dinner in Tokyo. This city is so diverse. A lot of skyscrapers, a lot of artworks and parks around. But I want to shout out to companies like Weeboo that allowed us to get the travel bug in the first place and gave us our first thousand dollars to travel the world two years ago. What I'm noticing about the city is that you can't really just cross the streets directly. It makes sense because it's a busy area and they don't want things happening with pedestrians, but you have to go up and down so many different um, areas like this right now just to cross streets. So we've been trying to cross the same street and this is like the third one we have to go in because they don't all link and you don't just go straight across and cut. You have to like go across, get another one across the street diagonally. It's not a straight shot. You pretty much have to cut across and then you can't just turn right, turn left and go diagonally. You gotta go across one street go perpendicular, go across the other street, and it's just a lot. So in the name of safety, I get it, but it does make it a lot longer just to get to one side of the street that you want to go. We finally made it to Ayala Triangle Gardens. It's like a little park here in the middle of the city. And it's pretty beautiful. They have this litter of light campaign going on, or artwork installation but just even walking here through all the subway systems there's so much artwork and murals this city is very artistic yet it's really upscale and high quality all around there's a lot of shopping centers along lined up right here and then even behind us there's a little that's a shopping center in there as well underneath the buildings there's like a starbucks there not sure what else is there but if you're in manila definitely come check out this area if you want to mix a uh, park life and then also a mix of high quality shopping. What do you think about this area? It's great. It's so clean, so chic. I wish I was here at night so I can see all the lights, but I really like it. And I love the architecture over here as well. It's so intellectual. Intellectual? I don't know what that means, <laughs> but no, I just like there's so much thought into each building. Like this right here is so cool. I haven't seen anything like this before. The so one thing I was going to say about Filipinos, but I think it's just Asians in general. So Ayala obviously is the last name of the builder of this whole foundation, but it's kind of crazy because all over South Asia, they always put their names on everything. They put their names on their businesses. They put their names in front of their houses. Whereas in the U.S., celebrities and rich people don't want people knowing where they live. And in front of big mansions here, they always, even like if the gate is let's say 300 meters behind, or the house is 300 meters behind the gate, they still put the name of who they are and their family name in front. So if you pass by, you know there's a wealthy person area. Like, they love they love showing up. In the U.S. where rich and famous people do not want people knowing where they live, right? If someone has a ton of money, they don't put their address, they usually buy the house under a different name. Here, if you got a ton of money, you're building this big old mansion on this plot of land, and even if your house is not even visible from the street, in the front where the gate is, you put in your family name all over it. Like, crazy difference between here and the U.S.
Once again, made our way to another church. Just went in there for a little bit, shot a few videos, but they want to disturb all the people praying. But it's like connected to this really nice mall right here. And it's like Carolyn Herrera, you got Balenciaga. So in the middle of all the over consumerism and over consumption, you need to pray to Jesus to forgive you for spending all your money to not on tithes and offering. That's a joke, by the way, if you didn't get it. After leaving this area, we headed to the area next to our first hotel where we stayed at, Quezon City, to catch a PBA game. Yep, a Filipino NBA game, but click that link to watch that video. So this is also the other part of Makati that they do not show. Right now we're in Makati, we are looking for our bag repair place. And I didn't actually realize it because we came here the other day I'm not sure if we were in the taxi or if we were walking, but I had no clue that this was still considered Makati until, like, there's cars everywhere. I had no clue this was considered Makati until I looked at the map trying to get the back repair. You can see cars everywhere. Um, it's not the nice glitz and glam part of it. This is where the locals that probably work in that glitz and glam part live. We kind of failed today. The bag repair place was located in someone's house and he's not home. So we spent like 15 minutes trying to figure it out. So we decided to call. So we decided to call. Our minutes ran out, but our friend just got phone service. So we used her phone service because it came with free calls to call. And he was like, oh, I'm not home. Can you come tomorrow? But I think we need to drop it off today. So we're going to be walking through the rest of Makati in the fancy area. Back. So we're back in the mall right now and we're going back to these travelers and one thing I noticed about these black travelers here, they don't do the head nod. I don't get that. Everywhere else we know it's universal to do the head nod when you see another black guy. Here, no one looks, no one does none of that. Like, are these the travelers that just didn't get the memo, or are they not from the U.S., or what, what is it? Kenny, are you excited? So excited. It's a good thing. So the guy brought us some spicy sauce. Kat, what was your first reaction? I was like, this is sweet. And then, and then like, what yeah. happened? Hit, 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 hit. Spicy, spicy. The sauce. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So the sauce was like, it was sweet. And I was like, oh, yeah, it is sweet. And then it started to build. And then I realized this is like a Nashville hot chicken. Have you ever had hot chicken? It's like a dry spice. This isn't dry because obviously it's sauce, but it like builds up. So like 30 seconds after you eat it, you start feeling the heat. So I don't know what this is, but that's actually legit spicy right now. Like my mouth is burning and I barely had it. Yeah, that's some good stuff though. Kenny, are you full? No, I can keep going. All right. This is like what, our fifth order? but it is an SM. Um, the Korean barbecue is pretty good, I'm not gonna lie. It's probably one of the best that we've had in Southeast Asia. I'm probably on par with Cambodia. Actually might be a little bit better because they did have scallops and shrimp included. It was a little bit more expensive. Definitely on par with some of the ones in LA, I would say, but the ones in LA give you more options for size. You get chicken wings, but they are like two and a half, maybe three times the price. So that makes sense. Cat is just shopping right now. We already went into one souvenir shop. It got some chocolates to take back home. And then we found this like tequila, like this cafe tequila. And it was only 65 pesos. So we got two of them, one for me to drink like tonight, and the other one to take back home. 
that's one of the things that we do here. We like whenever we travel, we like to get coffee and alcohol, the local alcohol. We already got coffee beans in Cebu, and then we just got alcohol. Now we'll probably end up getting like a gin or uh, rum, gin or rum, because they make a lot of gin and rum here, and that's like their specialty. Cat with her luggage, that's leaning. In the Philippines, they don't have hydro flask. They have hydro fresh and an aqua flask over there. That's kind of funny that they can't have like the name brand stuff, even though it's a water bottle. They just have like two equal parts of the name, just in a completely different product. Found out the name of this SM is SM Makati only because I saw a little poster for church service at SM Makati posted by one of the churches in the area. That's kind of funny. A church in the mall. A whole church service. That's how you know we're in the Philippines. This company and mall has like everything. Like every five blocks is one of these. Like every like mile and a half is one of these malls. This mall, they got church service at the SM Mall of Asia. They got a movie theater. They got, well, they have movie theaters in a lot of malls. But they got like whole arena for like concerts and events and stuff. And then they also have an IKEA. Like this, this company, of everything like they got everything alcohol bars chips candy clothing barbershop church event venues like everything probably a wedding chapel here somewhere when they say malls in asia are next level this is what they're talking about like if someone ever asks you how are malls in the philippines just show them like the directly of an sm mall anywhere in the in manila area or just all of the philippines Mainly Manila, just show them a directory and then they'll get to understand. Uh, some of these Filipino names be hilarious because why they got a baked good that they eat everywhere called puto and then they got fried pussy. <laughs> McKinney's reaction was something else. What they know about Harlem. Right. Which mall did you like better? Glorietta or SM? Um I would have to give it to Glorietta because there's Glorietta one, two, three, four, and five. <laughs> Huge. And I like the layout. The SM Mall is like the same in every place. city. Yeah. In every SM Mall, it's the same. Yeah. And yeah, it's like the same. I also like the decorations in Glorietta better because it doesn't have like so many logos. The SM Malls, it's like SM. SM, SM, it's SM. like everywhere. So yeah, I like this one better. As we leave the mall, as you can see, we're here by two separate malls. <laughs> And Glorietta is actually five malls in one, like mini malls, but they're still average sized malls. But Makati is known for having a lot of malls, a lot of luxury shopping centers, I would say, different spots with coffee shops like we were earlier. So if you want that inside the city, this is where you need to be. This is the most modernized city and one of the newest besides BGC. But this is where everybody that pretty much makes money lives this is where you see all the nice cars, the Ferraris, the Rolls Royces, the Mercedes. It's a completely different vibe than Manila and even some of the other nicer areas in the area. We haven't been to BGC yet, so I can't say anything about that. But if you want shopping, if you want nice cafes, nice restaurants, like the Korean barbecue restaurant which earlier, which was really good, this is where you need to be. I actually lied, it's not just two malls. One Ayala is right there as well. I'm pretty sure that's a mall and not a... I actually can't tell. It might be a living area, but I'm pretty sure not that close to the mall. So you have three malls or six malls right next to each other or seven malls right next to each other in this small little area. It's actually a pretty large sized area, but you get what I'm saying. But in the middle of that, you have all these parks. You have a little lake, a church. It's a good mix of city and nature as well. Right there, there's a park where you can just rest, chill, whatever. It's not too big, but there are seats and stuff around. So that's basically it to Makati. It's just crazy the discrepancy and difference between the poor and the rich, but that's Manila in general. In one area, it can be really nice and then really bad in the next area, just like in LA as well. LA in the United States is the same way. A lot of big cities in the United States is the same way, so that it does make sense and it's not super, super weird. Yep, that's a wrap for today because tomorrow we have a long day doing a bike tour in Intramural. So if you want to watch that video, click here. And if you want to watch the basketball video, click here.
care as well. See you guys.